Hey everyone, it's Tuesday, July 19th, 2022 here in Phoenix and oh my god, is it hot. I'm certainly hopeful this will turn out to be one of the hottest days of the year. But great day to make a video and I thought I'd ask your indulgence, so let me start today with a personal story. About 10 years ago, I was doing the right thing. I was trying to stay in shape and I was doing a boxing workout at this little place called The Deuce here in Phoenix. And I was on this street and by the side of this sketchy little place. And we were doing sprint runs. And as I was running, I felt a sudden squish in my knee and just a wicked burning pain and couldn't walk. I had to just hop on one leg to my car and go home. I'm a doctor, so I had an MRI the next day and it showed a torn meniscus. And I showed that MRI report and the MRI images to probably 10 orthopedic surgeons and every single one of them told me, you have to have surgery. You have to have a meniscectomy to clean that thing out. And I couldn't walk, but I was also super busy in the OR. There was no way I could take time off. I had people scheduled for surgery for weeks. And so I just kind of sucked it up and gutted it out and, you know, stood on a, a stool and did my best. And a few weeks later, my knee was so much better that I decided not to have surgery. And then I went on and I had uh, arthritis in the knee. And I mean, 10 years later, I'm 57 in my knee. Right now it's doing really well, but sometimes it really hurts. And I've always wondered if I would have had that surgery, would I have been better? Would I have prevented that arthritis if I got the surgery that all those doctors recommended? Well, maybe you have knee pain of your own. Maybe you had a torn meniscus and you know, as we age, our, our virtues become vices. Like I was trying to stay in shape. Maybe you were a runner and you tore your meniscus or maybe, who knows, uh, you did a lot of repetitive bending at work or something happened and the meniscus tore and now you've got arthritis and you're wondering, is it too late? Should I have my knee scoped now? Well, before you do that, you gotta watch this video to the end because a brand new paper has come out which sheds quite a bit of light on that question. Should you have an, an arthroscopic meniscectomy surgery for chronic knee pain? Does it prevent arthritis? Is your knee x-ray five years from now gonna look worse than if you had surgery? Or is the reverse true? If you have surgery, does that actually make arthritis happen? And is it worth the wait? Those are the questions that we're gonna answer by the end of this video, so hang in there and we'll get to all of them. Well, um, meniscectomy is a pretty well-known thing. It's, it's one of the more common operations in America. You've probably seen our webpage on meniscectomy and meniscus repair. Meniscus repair is where they sew it back together or tack it down, and that's generally reserved for people under 50. I'm too old. Uh, I hope you're not, but if you, uh, if for the purposes of this discussion, let's just assume that having your meniscus repaired is not an issue. Have you ever seen um, meniscus tear? This, this is a video of a knee and the kneecap. And if you open it up and look at the leg bone, this is a meniscus and this is a meniscus and that's what the tear looks like. Let's watch it again. I, I think it's really kind of helpful to see. This is a really simple tear. So we're opening up the knee. So we're on the thigh, the leg part. Boom, there's a tear in the meniscus. There's a lot of ways the meniscus can tear if it tears all the way along so that there's a free piece like the handle of the old tin paint bucket, that's called a bucket handle tear, or it can tear radially out and have multiple complex tears going through it. They all hurt, uh, but then they get better and kind of get better on their own. The way you know if you have a meniscus tear is by getting an MRI scan. You know, the MRI is, all the views are really, really good ways to see the meniscus. You can see the knee very clearly, and a skilled uh, surgeon can see a meniscus tear in there very, very easily and diagnose not only whether or not you have a tear, but how severe it is. Here's a, uh, a repair where they've gone in and sewed the tear together, and this is done through an arthroscope. So tiny incisions in the knee. One of the most common questions we get is, uh, when is surgery needed for a torn meniscus? And the 
the answer we have is in most people with torn meniscus, surgery is needed. Surgery is recommended for young people with tears on the outside to reduce the risk of developing arthritis. So that's not what we're talking about here today, right? What we're talking about here today are people who didn't have surgery or they develop the tear gradually over time. So this, if you're a young person with an acute tear from sports or something, this is not you. You may have noticed that in the professional athletes, for example, who have meniscal tears, every one of them gets surgery right away. But that's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who have um, meniscus tears for chronic reasons. Older folks, you older, over 50, <laughs> sorry. But you know, I'm, I'm there with you, so what can I say? But that's, that's more what we're talking about. Well, this is the study that was done. Uh, the effect of physical therapy versus arthroscopic partial meniscectomy in people with degenerative meniscal tears. The five-year follow-up of the ESCAPE randomized clinical trial. Very interesting. Anytime a trial has a name, you know it's likely a pretty substantial trial. And this one is called the ESCAPE trial which is also seemingly a good name for a trial. Uh, note also that it says in the, in the very, right here in the title, this is a randomized controlled clinical trial. That means that when someone comes in, if you meet the entry criteria for the study, flip a coin, you, surgery, you, physical therapy. So that means we have physical therapy, we have a control group and a treatment group, and we can make good comparisons between the two. Anytime you see a trial where it's just a non-randomized or non-controlled, there's probably not even a lot of point in reading that or following that news because there's so much selection bias in series that it's, it just tells you something is possible, not really whether it's a good idea or not. Um, this study, this is published in the journal um, Lancet investigations. It's an original investigation in orthopedics. I'm sorry, this is JAMA Network Open. JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, definitely a credible journal. Abstract, um, we're going to compare the five-year effectiveness of arthroscopic meniscectomy and exercise-based physical therapy. Okay, yeah, that's the question we want to ask. Because the alternative to having arthroscopic meniscectomy is probably having an injection or at least having physical therapy. Main outcomes, things we're gonna follow. Uh, patient reported knee function. Okay, that's important. Does my knee hurt? How much can I move it? What's the range? That kind of thing. The secondary outcome was progression in knee osteoarthritis shown on radiographic images in both treatment groups. Ah, very cool. I wanna know, is my knee, not only does it feel worse, but am I getting arthritis that five, 10, 15, 20 years from now is gonna zap me and make things worse. Uh, results, 320 patients were randomized into these two groups. When we look at the um, randomization scheme, this figure two, figure one shows the 321 people, 159 had meniscectomy surgery, 162 had physical therapy. Whenever I look at a trial of something versus surgery, I want to know how many people who didn't have surgery crossed over. And here, one withdrew after they were randomized. 16 had surgery, so they were supposed to get physical therapy, but they said, eh, and they crossed over and had surgery anyway. 19 crossed over, three crossed over, three crossed over. By the end of the trial, 52 out of the 162, so almost one in three people, said, screw you, I'm not going to stick with this PT, I'm going to go have the surgery. How many people who had surgery said, oh, the surgery didn't work out, I'm not going to have surgery? Zero, right? You can't undo it. So you can never look at the reverse. But you can always say, look, of the 162 people who were randomized to physical therapy, a third said, forget it, I'm, I'm having surgery anyway. So that kind of gives you a bad taste in your mouth to start out something like this for physical therapy. And in fact, if you look at overall the results, the rest of it is actually quite interesting. There's really no difference between the two groups, and the statistics were adequate to prove the questions and assumptions that they made. This is actually a pretty significant study because to answer the questions that we started out posing to ask ourselves. So we've got good statistical power here, and the first question, 
Well, let's just take me for example. I never had the surgery and now I've got arthritis. Did I hurt myself by not having arthritis? No. The x-rays, whether you had surgery, didn't have, or just physical therapy, the x-ray is pretty much the same five years later. So I probably didn't hurt myself. I can kind of push that out of my mind. Well, what about at this point? I mean, I've been living with this for so long, and now I've got knee pain and this meniscal tear. Should I go in now and have the surgery? No. Uh, people really didn't have more knee pain if they had surgery compared to if they just had physical therapy. Now, to really be within the parameters of this study, I should have had physical therapy, which I never did. But let's, uh, you know, for argument's sake, let's say that I did, then, then I would be about the same, which is, you know, probably not a good argument because <laughs> presumably physical therapy is actually helpful. Well, a lot of good information here. I hope this helps you decide, should you go back and have a meniscectomy if you have knee pain that started with a meniscal tear? You should not. It, this study shows clearly. And by the way, one thing about this study, which I really didn't go into, was this is not a new finding. When you look at the references to this study, 12, number 12 through number 18, so you know six references, are all prior studies which showed the same thing. This is not new information that meniscectomy doesn't make a difference when you look at it over time. So even though this is a very common operation, even though people get their knees scoped all the time to try to make it better so they can play more tennis or do whatever it is they want to do that their knee hurts, the fact of the matter is we've known for a long time that really doesn't work in most cases unless there's a specific thing um, knee scope for meniscectomy is really not going to make a difference compared to this plain old garden variety, uh, super helpful physical therapy. I'd like to give you hope though. Look, you know what's going on now. Uh, you don't have to live with your knee pain. What I see most of the time, to be honest, in this situation, and I, I'm not any different, it's going to be exactly the same for me over time, is it's no longer the torn meniscus that hurts. What hurts is the arthritis. And for some reason, it's hard for us to make that transition to, I'm not a torn meniscus patient anymore. That was 10 years ago at the Deuce. I'm an arthritis patient now. And the first level of treatment for arthritis after anti-inflammatory medications and physical therapy is injection. And uh, injection, you've got three, you know, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, you got Three different things they can inject. They can inject a steroid, which is a real good way to kind of cool things down. If your knee flared up and you just need it to kind of cool out, steroid's fine. Steroid probably lasts 100 hours in your body. So, you know, it's not a permanent solution by any means. A second thing they can inject are stem cells. They can inject uh, stem cells, uh, either the cells themselves, or they can inject amnion-derived growth factors. Now, um, we have this kind of like mental fantasy that the stem cells go in there and they're these stem cells and they reconstruct your meniscus and that's not at all what happens. There's plenty of evidence in studies now um, that it doesn't really cause, the stem cells don't live. They, they cause more effective healing. They turn your inflammation into healing and you can get better as a result of healing at any age. They kind of make you your body act like your knees 19 again, which wouldn't that be nice <laughs> for, for most of us, right? Um, so yeah, so you can have stem cells injected if you want to take a more holistic approach, like I want to try to get a year or two out of this. And then the last thing you can do is hyaluronic acid, which is known much more commonly as Synvisc. There's now four or five drugs in this um, category. For some reason, you know, I, I don't know if I have rooster um, rooster, part of the rooster tail or something is in this stuff, but some people call it rooster tail injections, but it's, um, it's hyaluronic acid, uh, uh, or it's derivatives, Synvisc or one of the others. I don't even know their names, but it's, it's generally honestly controlled by your insurance company. Whatever the insurance is willing to pay for, most people would rather go with that because there's maybe not that much difference between these things. So that's a real good way to go as well. And then the last thing to realize is you will get better. 
you, you will get better. You just have to sort of change gears and realize I'm no longer uh, a kid. My virtues have become, my vices have become my virtues or my virtues have become my vices. Uh, I, you got to change gears and treat yourself like an arthritis patient, but you will get better. You should have hope, and I wish you the very best. If you have any questions, please, please uh, click chat to talk with one of, one of our agents on phoenixspineandjoint.com or go to our website and fill out a form. We'll be happy to email you. If you just want more information, you can subscribe to our, um, our customer journey on knee pain and we'll give you all kinds of information about your knee and how you live with it. Uh, but you can live with it and you can live well. And um, uh, thank you for your time today. I'll talk to you soon.